Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're glad you decided to join us today. We have another exciting show, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about the Freedom Walk. You know, the, the level of patriotism in America and certainly in Oklahoma has increased uh, since the events of 1995 and of 2001. Yes, and the 9-11 uh, event that we just uh, recognized here recently uh, spawned the uh, Freedom Walk, which took place on September 11th. And we're going to talk with a couple of fellows that were in, in charge of putting it together to try to see why they did it, uh, what kind of uh, uh, turnout they had, what kind of results they had, and would they do it again? That's right. And, you know, it, it's hard to believe that it's been 11 years since the bombing occurred in downtown Oklahoma City, and, mm -hmm. and equally hard to believe that it's been five years since those tragic events that took place in the three communities uh, in the northeast part of the city, uh, part of the country. Uh, nonetheless, the Freedom Walk is a chance for Oklahomans here in this Freedom Walk to exhibit their level of patriotism. We're going to learn more about it and whether or not there will be any more in future years on today's edition of The Verdict. At Chesapeake Energy, here's a few of our favorite hornets. Alexis likes reading. Sam enjoys history. Alec loves math. Chesapeake is proud to support both the Oklahoma City NBA Hornets and the Young Hornets at Horace Mann Elementary, where over 150 Chesapeake employees mentor to children each week. The students gain a lot from the experience, but not as much as we do. Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. Satellite go out again? Yeah, rain. But this is just as fun. Don't live in satellite denial. Get the reliability you expect from Cox, your friend in the digital age. I'm Dave Bialis. Coming up this month on Generally Speaking, she's the first lady of Oklahoma basketball. Sherry Cole sits down with us this month. We'll talk about the upcoming season, her aspirations, and the pursuit of a national championship. You know how it is with anything that you're passionate about. You feel it. You can stay up all night working on it. You're not tired the next day. That's a pretty good sign that it's probably the thing that you should do. That's Generally Speaking, found only on the Cox Channel. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and Kent's going to introduce today's guests. We are very pleased today to have two guests that are going to talk to us about the Freedom Walk. On my right is probably a familiar face to some of you, Renzi Stone, who is president and CEO of Saxon Strategic Communications here in Oklahoma City. He is an OU graduate and a former member of the OU men's basketball team. Uh, he is a, uh, was a finalist for a Rhodes Scholar when he was at OU. And he is, uh, as I say, involved with Saxon Communication and deeply involved in the forming and carrying out of the Freedom Walk. His first visit on the verdict, Renzi, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's our pleasure, believe me. On my left is Chip Minnie. Uh, Chip is the uh, media uh, relations uh, and external communication officer for Devon uh, Energy Corporation, a, uh, uh, my landlord, as a matter of fact, <laughs> at our building downtown. And uh, his uh, boss, uh, Larry Nichols, has been on the verdict uh, a couple of times before. Chip uh, has a journalism background, as does uh, our co-host, of course, uh, Mick Cornett. They are both graduates of the University of Oklahoma Journalism School. Uh, Mick was with the Daily Oklahoman for about 15 years. Chip was Chip with the Daily and Mick was never with the Daily <laughs> Oklahoma. Uh, sorry about that. And, uh, but thanks for correcting me. Uh, for about 15 years writing in the business area and, and has been with Devin for three years. He also was involved in the Freedom Walk organization and uh, implementation. 
Chip, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're pleased you're here. Actually, I was a paper boy for the Daily Oklahoma. So were you? Yeah. You are well, an employee. I was, was too. <laughs> I was too, really? yes. Another, another Daily Oklahoma. When, when the E.K. Gaylord was, was the publisher of the game. Well, me too. Seems really? like a long time ago, doesn't what it? it? What it was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the, the Freedom Walk is an exciting thing. And Renzo, you know, a lot of times things have years and preparation goes into it. But this was really a pretty quick start. If you got to be, I think, first of all, pleased at the response and the success of the event. But talk about the timeline and when you first heard about it, your first reaction, and how we got to, uh, to September 11th. Sure. You know, I remember last year uh, sitting at home on the fourth year anniversary, and I remember seeing in Washington they organized a big walk. Uh, because September 11th, we don't really know what September 11th means yet. We don't know if it's just a day that people uh, died in those three places or if it's uh, the calling card for the war on terror. And so as I was sitting at home last year watching this walk, I thought, what a great idea. Uh, and the idea was originated out of the Pentagon. And Secretary Rumsfeld said, we need to do more than just a memorial service. Can we do something that really shows support of the troops and support for the war against terror and remembrance of the victims? And, you know, what is America all about? The freedom and the liberties that we have. So last year in Washington, they, they had an event that started at the Pentagon. It went over the Potomac River and went down on the National Mall where Clint Black gave a free concert. 15,000 people showed up. Incredible turnout. Fast forward to June of this year, uh, end of June, it, I'll tell you how short the timeline is. It seems like the end of June till September is a long time, but it's really not. I mean, you're really looking at 60 days. Um, and I was in Washington talking to some of my friends at the Pentagon. They said, we're trying to organize these walks all over America, and we really would like a city to step up and hold one in the heartland. And I raised my hand. I said, Oklahoma City's perfect. We, we understand terrorism. We have a great military following in our state. And we have people that know what it means to rebuild. And I think that's what Oklahoma City and Oklahomans are all about. And so uh, 60 days minus uh, 59, and here we are today, uh, or, or 60 minus 51, and, and we're just a few days after the walk. It was a huge success. Thousands of Oklahomans turned out, uh, and it just was a great event. Well, Chip, let me ask you, I know that uh, former Governor Keating had a role to play in this, as well as, of course, current Governor Brad Henry. Uh, how did uh, Governor Keating get involved? Well, as you know, uh, an event like this requires a good deal of leadership uh, and representation from several different areas, and we just were really grateful for um, both of them for stepping up and taking a part in promoting this event and showing, showing the leadership. You know, this Freedom Walk is, is an important thing for the state as well as for the nation as a whole. Uh, you know, 9-11, we, we have a, a unique link to 9-11 um, because of the April 19th bombing. And it's important, I think, to the state to, to, to um, recognize that link. And not so much the tragedies, but the response that we had to those, to those um, uh, attacks. Well, that makes some real uh, synergy, it seems to me, to include uh, Governor Keating because of his uh, uh, on-the-scene immediate reactions uh, that have been widely praised in the state and, and elsewhere for how he uh, had Oklahoma respond to the, uh, to the Murrah building bombing. Absolutely, you know, you could argue that Governor Keating uh, um, pioneered or set the stage or demonstrated how to respond to this kind of attack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that Oklahoma showed a great deal of leadership and the resiliency that we showed, the heroism and the, uh, and the, the community. Um, the solidarity that we showed following the attack, I think that it was it demonstrated a good deal of leadership for the state to show that. And I think maybe the, the, the nation drew on that later. Well, my memory of uh, five years ago was that it wasn't uh, very long before Oklahoma firefighters and, uh, and uh, search people were, were rushing to New York to try to help, just as New York had rushed to Oklahoma. Does that create another link to make the Freedom Walk uh, more poignant for us? Oh, absolutely. I think that it's no secret that, that uh, New York drew on Oklahoma. Oklahoma's experience with this type of thing and Oklahoma's people on the ground who responded, who had some experience here. So we had a great deal to contribute on 9-11 from, from several different areas. Renzi, the logistics of pulling something like this off are, are, uh, are, are tremendously deep. Uh, how did you choose the route, for instance? How did you know where you wanted to go? And when they said have a walk, something in your minds must say, well, we, we have to go from here to here. Well, 
the, the first thing I thought is, what's too long and what's long <laughs> enough? How long are people willing to walk? <laughs> and, and I wanted to think because this is a fr it was a free event and we were open. You know, you saw men, women, seniors. Uh, you saw people in wheelchairs. Uh, there were all people of all walks of life. Uh, so it was important to us to have a walk that was not a grueling walk, but something that had a period of, of reflection. And we, so we arbitrarily picked out a mile. And I think when you look at the, the walk, there's a lot of symbolism that we had that took place. We started at the place of the worst disaster of terrorism on American soil at the time. 169 people died. Great, a great memorial to Oklahoma City's courage there at the memorial grounds. And then we walked through downtown, an area that was completely destroyed, windows blasted out, a way of life stopped in time on April 19, 1995. And then we headed east into Bricktown, which signifies the rebirth of Oklahoma City and shows what a community can do when they work together. And you look at the corporate citizens, one of the buildings we'll walk right by is Devon Energy. And, and Chip can speak to this probably better than anybody, but Devon Energy, there's a situation where Larry Nichols, the chairman of Devon Energy, his wife Polly was a survivor of the bombing. And Devin is one of those corporate citizens that hasn't been just involved in the memorial, but has been involved in Bricktown and involved in all of Oklahoma City. And logistically, when we went around and tried to figure out how are we going to put this event together, we needed leadership. And, you know, the leadership of Governor Henry and Governor Keating working together in a nonpartisan manner for something that was really exciting was great. But then also we need the corporate leaders, people like Bill Anatubby from the Chickasaw Nation and people like Larry Nichols from Devon Energy who stepped up and said, this is important to us, this is something we have to do. Let me jump in here and get us to a break. Renzai Stone, Chip Minnie, we're discussing the Freedom Walk, which took place in Oklahoma City on September 11th. You're watching The Verdict, and we'll be right back. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> It sure is a blessing. <laughs> All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Oh, hi. I know you guys said I'd save with Cox Digital Telephone. Well, my bill came and... Could this be right? You may be surprised how much you save with Cox Digital Telephone. That's why over a million and a half people have switched. So this really is a total. Lovely. Because I think I found a good use for the savings. With Cox, there's no waiting for the other shoe to drop. The only surprise is, there's no surprise at all. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're discussing the Freedom Walk, which took place on September 11. Chip Minty and Renzi Stone are our guests. Kent, where do you want to go from here? I want to direct a question to Renzi. Uh, we, of course, have talked about the walk, and we'll talk more about it in this segment, but were there other activities involved besides just the walk? Well, well, the walk was the focus of yeah. the day, but but certainly there were other things that went on. Uh, for an event completely underwritten by corporate sponsors, um, we, we were able to do a few other things. One of the things we did was work with the Oklahoma Military Department and had a formation of F-16s fly over during the singing of God Bless America by a, a, just a cute little fifth grader from Millwood, uh, from the Millwood School District. Uh, then also at the conclusion of the walk, you know, Clint Black wasn't available for us, uh, <laughs> but we, we did get local favorites, the Great Divide, who is a regional, uh, who was a regional Red Dirt country band. And I'll tell you, one of the most moving moments of the entire night was given by Luke Strickland. Now Luke is a 23-year-old guy who served 12 months in Baghdad. While he was there on a $10 microphone on a laptop computer, recorded a song, uh, uh, about America's fight for freedom in Iraq and, and his role in it. Sent it back to his family and friends. It got circulated on the internet, started playing on radio stations, and Luke sang that ballad on the 11th. And, and it was moving because there's a guy that's been in the battle and he was singing about it from his heart and, and you know, and we might have been looking at the next Toby Keith there, uh, but that was really a special thing for everybody to see. It really was an entertaining night uh, besides the solemn part of the event uh, being on that special day. And where did those events take place? Started at the Oklahoma City Memorial and, and after a short ceremony they headed down the, the walk route and ended right at the Bricktown AT&T ballpark, uh, actually in the event center parking lot oh, uh, where the concert took place. It was over at 8 o'clock and people went and uh, went to Bricktown restaurants. I spoke to the Bricktown Association and they said anybody in our restaurants on Monday night is a good thing. So I felt like we contributed uh, quite a bit to the local economy as well. Is this going to be a yearly event or is this a one-time deal? How do you, what do you foresee? Well, I mean, I, I think if, if people like uh, Devin's Larry Nichols and, and uh, some of the other sponsors uh, wanted to come back and help underwrite it and, and you know they saw the success we had this year I think absolutely you know I, I came into it as the producer this year with the with the attitude of uh, it's the fifth anniversary we're gonna do it well and and we'll see what happens in the future but after seeing the turnout I think it's definitely something we should look at doing in the future I think it's something Oklahoma City can be proud of we're really unique I'm not sure any other communities across the country could pull it together uh, like we pulled it together for instance in Washington they had their Freedom Walk on September 10th. The reason why? Couldn't get the permits pulled from City Hall to close down the <laughs> Potomac uh, Bridge, the 14th Street Bridge there for them to walk over. So there are challenges in bigger cities, but in Oklahoma we worked with Sheila Dees at the city and, and worked with your office mayor, and it's amazing what great teamwork we have in our community where we could pull it together at 5.30 on Monday night, we can close down certain streets, and we're able to get all those people through there safely. Mick, you know, this is a great, I think this is a great event that enriches the community and really enhances the quality of life that we have in Oklahoma City. Well, let me ask you about Devin's role in this as a title sponsor, Chip. Uh, uh, you were a prominent title sponsor in this whole event, uh, all these activities. Uh, why is that important to Devin? Well, you know, as you know, Devin was founded in Oklahoma City about 35 years ago by Larry Nichols and his father, John. Um, Larry's an Oklahoma, Larry, they're Oklahoma natives. They're dedicated to Oklahoma City and committed to the uh, to the community. And and we um, saw the Freedom Walk as I, as I mentioned as a real asset to Oklahoma, not only Oklahoma City and downtown and downtown, but also the state because of the what it represents for the for the uh, for our heritage and for our history and for our community and so as a corporate sponsor we thought that this was a great opportunity for us to support something that's that's meaningful to the community also meaningful to our employees and that was a positive thing for us let me change the subject just a minute and and not uh, completely mm -hmm. uh, to talk about a recent announcement on Devon Energy about uh, some um, uh, oil uh, in the Gulf Right. Well, that's uh, we we recently were, had some very exciting news. We've been working on some uh, very uh, dramatic um, uh, drilling in the Gulf of Mexico in water uh, approaching two miles deep in an area, a, a geological age trend called the lower tertiary, and it 
we we have made four discoveries in this area, and uh, as and other and other and other companies have made others, and we just completed a a test with um, on one of those wells that determined the rate of commerciality of these wells, and it determined that uh, um, it's it's uh, it bears a great deal of oil, not only for Devon but for the entire industry. Um, there are some estimates that, that, uh, um, that suggest that industry-wide or beyond for this whole trend that's about 200 miles long and maybe about 100 miles wide that it could, it could contain as much as 15 billion barrels of oil, which would, be, uh, which would increase the, uh, um, the country's reserves by um, uh, as much as half. So we're very excited about that, not only for Devon, because Devon has a substantial share of that, but also for uh, the country. Well, it's gonna, if, if it pans out, I presume it would have a corresponding, uh, f a correspondingly favorable effect on the dependence on foreign oil. Well, it certainly, it certainly will. It'll be one more source. You know, there are really two major sources in North America for oil that, that, uh, can, can, that, that, that exist. Um, one is the oil sands in Canada, where there are vast amounts of oil that we can draw on, um, and also this area known as the lower tertiary in the Gulf of Mexico, which also has a good deal of uh, potential for supplying our long-term needs for oil. It's amazing how Devon's good luck turns out to be Oklahoma's and Oklahoma City's good luck and vice versa. I mean, the, 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 it's a fine partnership your company has with this city in doing things like the Freedom Walk. We're, we appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Renzo, what else is coming up? Uh, Freedom Walk behind us, what, what, what next? Well, I think we'll do, we'll do a little bit of a, a post-cap recap inside of our, our business, and uh, we'll evaluate and look at kind of the success of that. I think Oklahoma City, you know, moving forward into the fall, uh, there's so much we can be proud of in our community. And whether it's a Freedom Walk or whether it's supporting an NBA basketball team downtown, uh, or whether it's looking at other nonprofit uh, uh, opportunities to help build our community like the food bank uh, or like the city rescue mission. Mm -hmm. I, I think that our community is just very well positioned in, in terms of our potential across the rest of the world and, and our country as well. And I think that's the, the boundaries we should think of. What can we do across the world? And, and Mayor, you've done a, just an outstanding job being an ambassador of our community. I, I just think there's a just a wonderful position that we're at, and that's the reason things like the Freedom Walk are possible because you have buy-in on so many different levels. And this, of course, the Centennial events will be next year, and of course that's statewide. Most of the events are in Tulsa and Oklahoma City, but really a, a chance for the, this entire state to to stand up and and celebrate after 100 years of statehood. Chip Minty, Renzi Stone, thanks for your involvement in the Freedom Walk, and uh, thanks for all you yeah, do for Oklahoma. Thanks. Thank you, Kent. And I'll be back with a final word after this. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Hi, honey. You've got to check this out. What? What are we listening to? I had digital phone service installed today. It sounds just like before. I know, but it's going to save us a ton of money. With Cox Digital Telephone, you'll save big every month. Keep your same phone number and get your favorite calling features. Just pay less. That does sound good. You should hear the upstairs phone. 
I'm Chris Paul. And I'm Dave Baal with some of our friends from the Boys and Girls Clubs in Oklahoma. Growing up is tough. Everyone needs a fun and safe place to learn and grow. Boys and Girls Clubs offer programs that instill a sense of pride, purpose, and belonging. Club kids have grown up to become movie stars and, yes, even basketball legends. So we hope you'll join Cox, Oklahoma in supporting the Boys and Girls Club. Get involved with your local club today because it truly is... The Boys and Place for Kids! Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, a really interesting show with Chip Minty of Devon Energy and, and Renzi Stone of Saxon Communications as they, they put on the Freedom Walk in Oklahoma City. Yes, and uh, happened to have a shirt that they gave us that talks about the Freedom Walk. Mm -hmm. Very nice uh, gift mm -hmm. for us. We appreciate well, that. Well, I think Oklahoma City and, and the communities that were involved in 9-11 are inextricably tied together. Uh, I, I don't think yeah. there's any question that our community is always going to have that tie to 9-11 and vice versa. Those communities affected by 9-11 are going to be tied to, to our event because think for our generation those are the, the, the two acts of terrorism that people seem to gravitate toward and, uh, and to a certain extent now rally with, with patriotic uh, symbolism and uh, you know I, I tend to think our, our country is more patriotic today because of those events, as tragic as they were, because of those events, it has served as a bond for this, this country. Yeah, sometimes hard events like that uh, have some uh, positive byproducts that never would have been expected. Absolutely. And we have a, another interesting show coming up next week. We do. Uh, Dr. Bob Blackburn is going to be talking about the new Oklahoma History Center. Mm -hmm. Interesting person, Bob Blackburn. I, I don't think you can stump Bob on a question about Oklahoma history. It'd be interesting to try. I may try. <laughs> Uh, we have a website for The Verdict. I want you to go there and tell us about a show that you'd like to see here. Kent and I review those uh, uh, choices and uh, would love to have your input on a person that you'd like to see interviewed on a future edition of The Verdict. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We will see you next time on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.